Hey guys, it's me Astrid, and I thought it's about time for a garden update. Um, there's a few things I wanted to address. One, I was realizing the other day that if I'm going to do a garden series, I should have a schedule and have like a set couple of questions that I reflect on every week so that you guys can learn what I'm learning and so that I am actually reflecting on what's going on in the garden. So I'm going to come up with something. I'm going to try to have a regular like once a week garden update. Um, we'll see how well I do on that. But since I'm under quarantine with no work, I really don't have an excuse. So yeah, I can't just do makeup all day. Um, but yeah, let's go. Let's talk about my garden. So First of all, a few things that I have learned recently. One is that planting seeds in the soil and then trusting the earth and the sun and the sky to nourish them is uh, doubtful. It's a doubtful process. I was just like, I planted these seeds and I'm like, did I do it too early? Was the soil temperature, was it too cold? And now and now they're frozen and the seeds died. Like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. Like, all this stuff but I came to find that actually everything was fine and my seeds came up just fine and I'm gonna go ahead and show you those in just a minute I also wanted to say I'm like so excited to see all the flowers coming up things that I planted last fall um, it just it, it's really exciting so let me give you a tour of what's going on in the garden and I hope you guys enjoy. Cheers. So here we've got some giant red mustard. And I was just like, oh my gosh, which one of these greens, which one of these little things is the mustard? Well, it became pretty clear when these lovely purple things started all coming up in a row here. I especially like these guys. Look at that. They're just finally coming up. They have really pretty colors. I'm gonna try to sprinkle some diatomaceous, if that's how you pronounce it, earth on this so that the slugs don't uh, snack on my food. Next, you've got some lacinato, that's how you say it, kale. Um, this one, not everything is coming up, but we've got a couple little plants here and I can tell which is the kale or not because it's kind of you can see kind of like a row of it coming up so there's that row and then this is the another row of that kale and you've got there's a little green there there's a little green there there's a little green there it's gonna get big so I don't really need a ton of plants to come up um, so I'm okay with this but I might reseed it if I need to Next is like another area where I'm really struggling to tell what on earth is going on. I've got my Cimarron and Burpee Bib lettuce. And there's all these like little greens all over here, but I'm not sure if like the lettuce seeds got moved in the rain or what happened. Like, is that lettuce? Is that lettuce? Is that lettuce? I have no idea. So I guess I just have to wait. I am doing sequential planting, so I've got this row up to that bamboo skewer, and then at the 1st of April, I'm going to plant from here to that skewer, and then the 15th of April, I'm planting from there to the end, so that I have like sequentially grown plants, but I really don't know, you guys. I have no idea what thousands of these little tiny greens are. Next we have the bee friend bed. And it might not look like a ton is going on in here, but I planted lots of rows, like this direction, of this flower called Bee Friend, and I think it's called uh, Facelia. That's the scientific name, I forget the species name. And it's like, ooh, I, I, can, I don't know what's here, I don't know what's here. But if you get close, you start seeing like, oh, what are these frilly little things? What are these? Okay. And then you get over here and some of these have really taken off. So this is what the bee friend looks like. And what I wanted was, I, you know, I didn't have, this bed is going to be for alliums in the fall and winter. I'm going to put a bunch of elephant garlic and onions and stuff in here. 
but in the meantime I wanted the bed to be covered with something that was useful and I wanted the bed to um, I, I wanted to be do something for the bees and so I decided to put bee friend in this bed because it grows in my grow zone zone 8 and uh, it has pretty little flowers and people have said that when you have bee friend you can hear the bees buzzing from like very far from the garden bed I'm really excited about that also we've got stuff from whoever lived here before these beautiful uh, daffodils is that narcissus I don't know um, and then back here we've got this little project of removing this enormous rose bush. This rose bush is a freaking monster. You can see that root there. It's like here. Check it out. It's like bigger than my foot and it like I've, I've we've literally we've cut as many roots as we possibly could. I was trying to get this out. It was too hard. I need like a saw or something. And even with all that, we cut everything off, it still has new growth coming up. So I think I'm gonna put this in a big pot and maybe give it to someone who really wants a monster rose bush. But what happened with this is that this rose bush was spread about to there, to there, and all the way over here. And I had like, it, 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 you could hide a family of deer in it. So it was really a lot of work to get rid of it. and. I wanted to regrow it so bad, but it just kept like destroying the fence and it was very thorny and it was very aggressive, so I had to make the tough decision of taking it out. Next we've got this bed under the spruce. Um, I got married to my husband under this beautiful spruce tree and uh, you can see I've planted a whole bunch of daffodils or narcissus or whatever around the edge and they're like pink they're gonna be so pretty and I'm just so proud that I planted something in November and here it is just about to bloom I'm really excited about that it feels great I've also got there's like a bunch of dead nettles and a bunch of this like winter green that took over here but I kind of am not mad about those plants because they're easier to get rid of than dandelions they cover the ground and frankly they look really pretty so I ain't even mad you guys they can they can grow eventually I'm gonna have this um, sorrel here I want this to take over and I want these greens these greens and um, columbines to fill up this bed so yeah we'll see and we've got some cyclamen that I transplanted that is somehow seems still alive which is a miracle same with the sorrel, it's just like, yeah, I, I can live, it's, I'm cool, I'm cool. And finally, we've got my bleeding hearts bed, which is just being, like, ravaged by squirrels. I wish I could choke the little monsters. Not really, squirrels are cute, I love squirrels. But, like, stop, stop digging in my frickin' chips. You're making my bed ugly. You can see my bleeding hearts, though, they're coming up here, right there right there, right there. These more native bleeding hearts were already here when I moved in, which was nice. Um, but I planted a bunch of the non-native ones that are bigger and have a little bit nicer flowers because I just really like those. So they're doing pretty well. There's a few bulbs in this bed and I don't really know what they are, but I ain't even mad about that either. And I wanted to show you guys something that I was pretty amazed by. And that is that even at this incredibly small size, these bleeding hearts are already flowering. Like they're just growing and flowering and growing and flowering. Like look at that. I, I never had imagined that something like that would bloom so small. And I'm so excited to see these grow really big and bloom up through uh, early summer. I, I really can't wait. So yeah, that's kind of that. Um, you know, this whole like early spring business, it's like the hurry up and wait season. You know, we, we prepared our garden bed, we tilled the soil, we laid out these chips, we did this really big project, and then we planted the seeds, and we gotta wait. And I'm just like, ooh, I want, like, I, I pruned my um, Rose of Sharon 
like last summer and I've been really freaked out like oh did I prune it too late in the season is it gonna die and it's like only just now getting these little tiny leaves on it and I'm like I want everything to grow I want it to grow I'm going nuts guys so I think spring is the time of hurry up and wait I hope you guys are doing well I love all of you I, I wish everybody the best safety remember to take a break from social media and the news do a project, learn a skill, learn a language, do anything to take care of yourself. Okay, guys, take care of yourselves, your family. Again, I love you and um, happy growing. Bye.